Hey everyone, sorry I haven't been posting many tutorials lately. I've been having a lot of health issues, so I couldn't really make any tutorials. But now I think I am feeling better. And in this tutorial, I want to show you how to make the Hammer of Dawn effect from Gears of War in Unreal Engine 5 using the KO system. So it looks like this. And here you can keep an eye on the frame rates. So if I just click on the ground, you can see this laser will come out. And if I move it to the mesh like this, you can fracture through the mesh. And obviously this is a lot of fractures, but there are ways to optimize this also. And in games, you probably won't need this many fractures. You can also have smaller number of fractures like this. So here I can fire the laser like this. And as I move the laser, it will destroy the mesh like this. And here I can customize a lot of different things. So the first customization will be adding a delay in the destruction. So here if I click here, and if I move it like this, nothing will be destroyed. But if I just keep it at a point, it will get destroyed like this. And here also and here also but if i move it nothing will happen but if i keep it here it will get destroyed i can also increase the size of the destruction so now here if i click here it will destroy it like this so here you can see I have a new gun. This is a laser firing gun. So if I pick it up, I can fire the laser like this. So this is a gun we are going to be creating today. And here I can also add a slow motion effect for the physical meshes like this. You can look at the frame rates. Our frame rates is been lagging, but the physics frame rates are different. You can also have this effect. But this is an experimental feature. This will also help in optimization. Also, you can control the speed. It's really simple. If you don't really want to watch the end tutorial, all you have to do is go to the frame rates and pick physics async. Enable sub stepping also if you want. But that will improve the physics. So here, if you set this value to like 0 0.03, we will get our normal motion. And keep in mind that this is an experimental feature, also this one. This will give more accurate physics, I think. And this tick physics async is like a new event tick for just the physics assets in the game. So if I set this value to like 0.1, the physical simulations will be really slowed, but everything else will be fast. So it will also improve frame rates if you are looking for an effect like this. So this is what we are going to be creating today. And if you want to download the entire project file, you can support me on my Patreon. And for $5, you can download this project file and also download almost all my previous project files from there. And if you are already my patron, thank you very much for supporting me. So first we will create the Niagara systems. So right click, then go to FX, then Niagara system. And now here, click next. And here, select the static beam and click add and click finish and I will call this ns underscore laser then open it up now here go to the emitter setup for beam end we will give a value of 200 in the c direction so it will be coming from the top we can give a bigger value like 1200 and we can bring the system into the world like this and it should look like this and it should be fairly high and now we can go to the particle system and here we need to make this update really fast so we can go to the emitter state and change the loop duration to 0.1 and we can go to initialize particle and change the lifetime to like 0.1 also so it will update really fast and now we can go to the spawn and change the spawn count to like 
10 or something like that. We don't really want too many particles. And now we can go here to particle update and type in update beam because we are going to update the beam end location in the blueprint. So in order to update that, we need to have this update beam in the particle update. And here we can create a user exposed variable and it should be vector and we can call this LOC for location and this will bring our location from the blueprint to the Niagara system and here we can go to the particle and we can change the color to a very bright red color like this and here we can go to color here and we can untick this we don't really want that and now we can just change the color using this and we can go to the beam width and we can just delete that and we can add a new beam width and here i'll just duplicate this beam because i want to use this for something else later so i will name this laser and now we can work on our static beam so here we can go to the beam width and we can use a curve here so float from curve and change this normalized a to link order so ribbon link order and here if i set this value to like zero and set this value to like one and if we increase the scale to like 10 or something like that and i will just untick this laser so now you can see that it is kind of tapering off towards the end like this i can also select both of these and auto curve it so we can control the curve like this so this value i will set this to like 20 so this is what our beam looks like and now we can go to the particle update and we can type in deter so we get this deter like this and here we can also click this and type in float from curve and like before set this value to like 0 and set this value to like 1 and if we increase the scale here so now you can see that the beam is kind of wiggling and if we increase the count to like 15 or something like that we can have this shape and now we can go to the detail position and auto curve this again and get something like this and here change the normalize aid to link order particle ribbon link order so we get something like this so you can see that the bottom portion is hardly jiggling so we get something like this and now we can duplicate this so i'll just copy this and paste it and here i can change the beam width to like 10 and i can change the digital position to like 40 or something like that so now we get something like this and this is what we want and now here in the beam width here we can set this value to like 0.3 so there is some thickness there so now we get something like this you can adjust the color values here so if it is too much you can change this to like 100 and 100 or even lower if you want now we will create the fountain effect so for that right click then emitter then get the fountain and here we can go to the initialize particle and change this to like a red color like this and that's all we need to do here then we can duplicate this and now we can create a fire effect so go to the sprite render and here for this one we can search fire then fire m sub uv and here we can set the sub image size to 6 and 6 because this one is a 6 by 6 sub uv and here we can go to the particle update and type in sub uv and sub uv animation and here for the end frame we can give a value of 35 because 6 into 6 is 36 and we start at 0 so it's 35 and now we can go to the initialize particle and set the 
price size to like 80 and 120 and now we can go to the phone rate and change this value to like 12 maybe like 25 i think 25 is fine but we can increase the size a bit so set this value to like 120 and this one to like 200 so we get something like this and we can disable the gravity and now we can change the velocity to like 100 and 200 for the max and min so we get something like this now we can change the spawn rate to like 10 and now we can go here to the particle update and click add and type in sprite size and now we can auto curve this and now we can adjust the curve so like this or like this so we get something like this i think this fire is a bit too bright so we can go here and change this value to like 40 or something like that now we will create the explosion effect like this one so for that right click then add emitter and go to omnidirectional and here go to sprite render and here type in explosion and get the explosion sub uv and also change this to like 6 by 6 and add a sub uv animation here and change the value to like 35 and here go to particle initialize and change this value to like direct set and set that to 1 and go to particle state and here change the loop behavior to infinite so it will spawn particle infinitely and change the value to like 0.1 so it is spawning a lot of particles really fast we can change the spawn count to like 12 or something like that and now we can go to initialize particle and set the value to like 120 and maybe 70 and 120 like this and here we can disable the gravity like this and also we can reduce the spawn count to like 6 or 5 or something like that and maybe we can also reduce the size to like 40 and 80 now it looks like this we can add a camera offset to bring it in front of the meshes so set this value to like 70 now here change the lifetime to like 0.5 so it will be faster now copy the scale sprite size from here to the particle update here and we can delete the old one now go to the scale sprite size and here we can set this value to like 0 and here we can delete this point and set this value to like 1 and now we can change the scale to like 3 or 2 maybe 3 will work better and now we can go to the fountain and change the size to like 3 and 8 so we get smaller particles we can also change the fountain to a gpu particle and set fixed bounds now we can spawn a lot of these tiny particles we want and now here for this color i will give a slightly darker color like this one and now we get an effect like this now let's create the gun so for that go to the first person character and go to the blueprint then duplicate the bp rifle and open it up and here you can see this event dispatcher and also we can select the skeletal mesh and go to the material and create an instance then we can change the color to a green color like this and now we can add this back to the rifle and now we can put the rifle back in here like this i will just move this away now if i click play i can pick this up now go to the rifle blueprint and here we will just disconnect on fire projectile and we will get a tick and get a gate and connect this to open 
and here we will create another custom event so we can type in custom event and we can call this close gate so when we press the left mouse button we need to open the gate and when we release the left mouse button we need to close the gate so i'll get a print here so we can see what's happening and if i go to play and pick this up and press the left mouse button you can see hello but when i let go the hello is still there because we haven't added the close gate so to add the close gate we need to go to the first person character then here you can see the one use item event dispatcher we need to add one more and we can call this stop and now click compile and we can go to the rifle and here we can drag from the first person character and type in stop and here bind event to stop and connect this here so here you can see that when we collide with the first person character we attach the rifle to the first person character using the grip point socket and we also get a reference to the first person character when we collide with it here like this so we can use that to call the event dispatcher and here we have this new bind event so here we can go to the input primary action and we can remove this you won't have this because it is my previous one i will just remove that and i will just drag the stop in and click call and when i press the primary action button which is a left mouse button it will call on use item which is this one call on use item and when i release the left mouse button it will call stop which is this one and now from the event delegate we can drag and type in create event and this event we can select this and get the close gate this close gate event is this one so now if i press play and get the gun and if i press and if i release you can see it stopped and now i can press and release like this so this is working so here now i can get a line trace by channel and for the start we need to get the first person character reference and get the first person camera location get world location of the first person camera and here we can also get the forward vector of the first person character this is the direction in which the camera is looking so if we connect this to the start this is a unique vector so if you multiply this value with a float value and type in 1500 so this will be 1500 units in front of the direction we are looking and we can add that to the location of the camera so we can send a line trace in that direction so if i set this to for one frame in the debug we can see the line trace so we can see where it is hitting so here you can see that red dot and it is moving with the gun where we are pointing at so it is moving to the location we are pointing at like this so this is what we want now here get a branch and connect this to the return value so whenever we hit something we can execute the true branches and now click the hit so we get this hit location and now we need to get a sequence node because we need two events from here so first one we will use to spawn the niagara system so for that drag and type in do once so it will only spawn the niagara system once and here type in spawn system attach because we need to spawn the system attached to the gun so here in the gun we can add a new arrow component and we can move this to the location we want the beam to be from and we can also rotate this if you want so now connect this to the component and for the system this will be the laser we created and change this to snap to target and we need to create a 
reference to this so we can delete this or set variables in this system later so promote this to a variable and i will call this system now i press play and go to the gun and if i click see it is spawning in the arrow location we need to spawn where it is hitting so in order to do that we can also spawn the system at the hit location but if we do it like this the guiding laser will lag behind the gun when we move the gun i did a test before the tutorial and the guiding beam always lagged behind the gun when it moved so here i am just attaching the particle system to the arrow and we can set the location in the niagara system so here we have this location vector we created we can use that to get the location vector into our niagara system so here we can go to the beam emitter setup and here for the beam start we can drag this location in like this and also we can do that here and for the fountain we can go to the initialize particle then position mode change this to direct set and drag this in same thing here so i am doing it like this because i want to create the guide beam on the same system if i had a separate system i wouldn't have to do this and here go to the position and change this to direct set and drag this in and this laser we will set up as the guide beam later so now go back to the rifle and here we can now we can get the system like this and do an ease value check here so if only this system is valid we will drag from the system and type in set vector parameter and this parameter name should be this this loc name we created so type in loc and connect this to the valid and connect this to the out hit location like this and if i press play and now if i get this and now you can see our beam is spawning at the location like this but you can see that the guide beam is going somewhere else so we need to fix that so in order to fix that we can go to the laser and take this on and here we can go to the emitter setup and here for the end location we can drag this in and here also tick the absolute beam end now if i press play you can see our beam looks like this so now we can reduce the size of the beam so go to the beam width and change this to like one now if i press play we get something like this So here when I let go, it won't delete the beams. Now we need to fix that. So here we can go to the rifle. Now we can create a new custom event. So right click, then custom event. And we can call this reset. And now here just copy this system and the is valid node. And paste it here. And connect this here. And here we can drag this and type in deactivate. And connect this to valid. And we can go back to the laser and we can go to the system so here in the system update the inactive response should be complete and let the emitter finish then kill the system so it will kill the system when it is deactivated and now connect this here to the reset so we need to reset that after we deactivate the system because we need to create that again and here for the false we can call reset and here for the close gate also we can call reset so when we let go of the button it will reset the do once so now if i press play and get the gun and press you can see when i let go it will delete the system and if i go up it will also delete the system so it won't hit anything so it will delete the system and we have this laser like this now we will create the field system to interact with the chaos meshes so for that right click then blueprint then type in 
field then get the fx master field and select and i will call this bp field system then open it up so we get this thing and here we can change the activation type to trigger we can also turn on the debug for now and now we can go to a rifle here we can spawn active from class and this one and we will spawn the bp system and now click this and for the location we can get this location from this out hit location so we can bring that in and now if i just press play so here if i pick up the gun and if i click you can see that it is spawning this field but it isn't doing anything and also if i move the gun it is not spawning the field so we need to set that up now so for that we can drag and create a variable from this and we can call this fs so this will be the field system and here we can drag this if we go here you can see that the field system component is a parent of all of this so we need to call that so here drag and type in get world location and here we have to get the world location of the field system component i'm sorry we have to set the world location so delete that and drag from this and type in set world location and connect this here and connect this to the location and now here we need to do one more thing when we reset we need to delete our field system also so drag this in and then do an if value check here also and connect this here and connect this here and drag again and type in destroy actor so when we reset we will also destroy the previous field actor so connect this here and here we can also type in if value for this one also and connect this here connect this here and connect this here so this will prevent any runtime errors when we call this one but this thing is destroyed and we are calling nothing that will cause some runtime errors this is valid node will fix that so now if i press play and get the gun if i move the field you can see it is moving with our beam like this now we need to do some more checks here so we don't really want to move the field on tick drag from here and type in trigger and we can get this c trigger and if i connect this so now if i press play and get the gun and trigger this we don't really want the trigger on a tick so in order to fix that we can get a branch and connect this to here and connect this to the exe and here we can move all of this here like this and now we can promote this location to a variable and we can call this location and connect this here and connect this here so now for the condition we can get this location and we can get this and type in distance and connect this here and here we can type in greater than and only if this distance is greater than 50 we will trigger the field system and also move the beams otherwise it won't move anything now we can just disconnect these two so here we can just disconnect these two and this one and bring it before the branch because we need our beams to move all the time so now connect this here now connect this to the c trigger also now here we only want the field system to move when the distance from the last location to the newest location is more than 50 so now if i press play 
and if I move the gun you can see you can see the field system moving with the beams but if I set this value to like 300 or something like that and if I pick up the gun and if I hit here now only if I move 300 unit away from that unit the field will spawn like this so now here if I activate the beam and let go and then activate we cannot see the beam so we need to fix that also so in order to do that we need to go here and this destroy actor we need to disconnect that and connect this to the reset so the reset when we call the reset it will reset the do ones and now if you only want to trigger the force field after a while you can get a re-triggerable delay so get a re-triggerable delay and if I set this to one second so here we need to move the re-triggerable delay here like this so now the force field will only trigger if we hold it in the same position for one second so if I hold it here for one second it will trigger like that so you can also set that to like two seconds if you want and here if I move this it won't really affect anything but if I keep it here after two seconds it will trigger and if I set this to like zero it will trigger all the time so here we also need to reduce the distance to like 150 now we will create the chaos mesh so I will just delete this one and I will just duplicate this and I can select this and I can go here and I can go to the fracture and here I can create a new geometry collection and click OK and now go to uniform fracture and set this value to like 8 and 16 so we get bigger collection like this and fracture that so we get this level 1 with 15 chunks so now we can increase this to like 24 and 50 and fracture so we get this level 2 we can now change this to like 60 and 120 and fracture now we get all these chunks so now we can go to the cluster and auto cluster them it will take a while and it will create a new cluster maybe this value is a bit too much you can keep it at level 2 if you want and now if I just get this explode amount we can see the explosion And here you can see the different fracture levels. So level one is bigger chunks. This will be more performant. And level two is even smaller. And level three is really small. So this will be very expensive. So depending on the size of the chunks you need, you can change the min and the max size and create different levels. So this is all we need to do here now we can go to the select mode and here we can type in bone and untick this so we can get our original color back and for the inside color we can give a new color like this one if you want so the inside will be golden or you can create a very simple material like this one with motion for way chaos connected to like this so you can get this motion for way chaos from the normal map from height map chaos so if we go inside it and you can just copy that and bring it here if you create that you can also add that like this and if you don't have that you don't really need that either you can have this one so now if i press play and get the gun and if i hit this you can see that it is fracturing the mesh 
and now if you want to increase the size of the field you can go to the pp field system and then we can go to the volume and we can increase the size like this and we can increase the size here in the square radius so i will set this to like 120 and we can also go here to the system and here i want to add more rotation to the chunks so for that i can add more torque so type in torque here and right now it is set to 8 i can set this value to like 20 and now if i press play and get the gun and now you can see that it is a big hole it is creating And now I will set the size back to 50 and now I will go to cell and untick the debug so I cannot see the field. So now if I hit the mesh you cannot see the field but you can still destroy everything. Now here I already had this performance things on so if I just turn that off so now if i press play and get the gun and if i move this you can see it is fracturing the mesh also this one like this but here you can see our frame rates dipping really below 20 when i move this like this so if you want to increase the frame rates there are some things we can do You can use an experimental feature in the project settings so in order to get that go to edit then project settings then here type in async and here we can turn on the sub stepping this will give more accurate physical collisions i think and here we also have this tick physics async so if you tick this we can select the interval at which the physics simulation updates so if I set this to like a value of 0.1 the physics simulation will update very slowly so it will look like we have slowed the time like this. So this will also help with the performance but obviously this is very slow and if you are not looking for an effect like this then we can go back and set this value to like 0.0 four or something like that which will look fast enough but it will still save some frame rates see it is not dipping below 20 now no matter how many chunks there are it is not dipping below 30 but you obviously don't really need this many particles here I will just delete this collection and create a new one like this and I can create a new geometry collection and go to uniform and set this to like 8 and 16 and fracture that and now I can go back and go here and type in bone and untick show bone color so we get our normal material back and now we can play with really big chunks like this you don't really need this many small chunks if you are worried about performance also one more thing you can do is that you can go here and change this step value to like one so keep in mind that this is an experimental feature so sometimes it may not work correctly so now if we set that to one second and and if we just simulate this you can see a slow motion effect like this which is kind of cool So I think that's it for the tutorial guys. Thank you very much for watching.